In this video, we're learning about gene and chromosome mutations. So we'll cover what gene mutations are, the different types of gene mutations, and finally, what chromosome mutations are and how they can affect the number of chromosomes. If we start with what gene mutations are, a gene mutation refers to a change in the sequence of DNA bases. Mutations can happen spontaneously during the process of DNA replication, which is when cells make copies of their DNA before they divide. So, in our example here, these bases have mutated during that DNA replication. It's a bit hard to see, but you can tell they've mutated because those bases are different from the ones on the other copy below. While mutations can happen naturally, certain factors do increase the risk of mutations, and these risk-increasing factors are known as mutagens. Mutagens can come in multiple different forms though. One example is ionizing radiation, like UV rays from the sun or X-rays. Ionizing radiation can break DNA strands and change their structure. Certain chemicals can also act as mutagens though. And a good example here is cigarette smoke, as the chemicals in the smoke can change your DNA bases. And finally, even viruses can act as mutagens, because they can insert their own genetic material into our DNA, and this then changes the base sequence. Next, let's look at the three main types of gene mutations. Deletion mutations, insertion mutations, and substitution mutations. If we start with deletion mutations, these happen when a base is removed or deleted from the DNA sequence. This causes something called a frame shift, which changes all the DNA triplets after the mutation. And because all these triplets get changed, it then changes the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide that the gene codes for. For instance, if this is our original sequence and a mutation deleted this thymine, we'd then be left with this mutated sequence, where every base after the deletion shifts to the left. Because we read the genetic code in groups of three bases, all DNA triplets after the deletion have changed. And this means while the original sequence coded for the amino acids glycine, proline, and serine, the new sequence codes for glycine and arginine. And then because we're missing one base here, these final two bases can't code for an amino acid at all. Next, let's go over insertion mutations, which happen when an extra base is added or inserted into the DNA sequence. Just like deletion mutations, this causes a frame shift that changes all the DNA triplets after the mutation. And so, just like deletion mutations, also changes the resulting sequence of amino acids. So with this same original sequence, if a mutation added the adenine base here, every base after the insertion shifts to the right by one. The sequence now codes for the amino acids valine, threonine, and valine with one extra base that now can't code for any amino acid. Finally, substitution mutations happen when a base is replaced or substituted by another base. Importantly, there are a few different things that can happen in a substitution mutation. So let's look at those now using our original sequence again. Let's say we changed this guanine into a cytosine. The new DNA triplet of CGC now codes for a different amino acid, alanine but the other amino acids all stay the same. And importantly, the number of bases also stays the same. And because of this, it doesn't cause a frame shift. But if we instead mutated this cytosine into a thymine, something interesting happens. Because of the degenerate nature of the genetic code, GGC and GGT actually both code for the same amino acid, proline. So this mutation ends up having no effect on the amino acid sequence. In reality, this is actually quite common as many amino acids are coded for by multiple different DNA triplets. Finally then, let's cover what chromosome mutations are. We use the term chromosome mutations to describe changes to the number of chromosomes or to the chromosome's overall structure. In this video though, We'll focus on mutations that affect the number of chromosomes, and these can happen spontaneously due to errors during cell division. 
Now, there are two main types of mutation we need to cover. Polyploidy and non-disjunction. Polyploidy refers to having more than two sets of chromosomes in body cells. For reference, most animal cells are diploid, which means they have two sets of each chromosome in each cell. And these are often referred to as 2N cells by scientists. But polyploidy mutations mean some organisms develop from zygotes with more than two sets of chromosomes in, and so end up with more than two sets of chromosomes in every cell. For instance, if they've started from a zygote with three sets of each chromosome, they'd end up with triploid, or three N cells, throughout their entire body. As it happens, polyploidy is actually quite common in plants and can lead to new plant varieties or species. Unfortunately, though, it's usually fatal in humans, and most individuals with polyploidy don't survive past birth. Now, if we move over to non disjunction mutations, these occur when homologous chromosomes fail to separate properly during meiosis. And remember here, meiosis is just the process that produces gametes, or sex cells. For instance, here we can see a pair of homologous chromosomes in a cell that's about to go through meiosis. For simplicity, we're just showing one pair, but remember in reality, there'd actually be 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes in a human cell. Usually, this would end up producing four haploid gametes, with haploid meaning they've got one set of chromosomes each. But sometimes, the chromosomes don't separate properly like this. This results in some gametes with extra chromosomes and some gametes with missing chromosomes. If any of these gametes are involved in fertilization, the resulting individual will have extra or missing chromosomes in all of their cells. This can lead to conditions like Down syndrome, where there's an extra chromosome 21. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.